the European Commission uh, is re-evaluating uh, the framework regulation. Um, of course, well knowing that, well, hmm, uh, uh, hmm. Is it just slow or? Okay. Ah, that's it. Um, it is re evaluating the framework regulation, well knowing that the approach uh, taken so far is not very successful. This re evaluation goes through two steps, as you probably all know. Uh, the first one um, started about one year ago. It was a broad public consultation, um, consultation of stakeholders and so on, by a company called Ecoris. This is more or less completed, um, and uh, a report is likely to come out in very soon. Um, some uh, key sentences which I think will show up, not very surprising, are um, gaps in the implementation and weaknesses in enforcement that raise questions on the ability to secure a high level of protection, which is a, a political um, wording which just says it fa fails to ensure safety. The second, doubts about whether the system of official controls adequately enforces the requirements of food regulation uh, legislation. Um, yes, I'm, I was working for such an official control and I just have to say we are unable to implement this system as it is provided by this framework regulation. Then a third point, um, reservations about the underlying approach focusing on starting substances. Uh, the problems about the non-intentionally added substances. Um, yes, most of the components migrating are not starting substances and they have been completely neglected in the uh, classical concept of the uh, food contact regulation. More harmonization um, on the European level, of course. Okay, so this will be fair, fairly harsh criticism, um, even if you um, consider that this is political wording. Now the next step starts now, and this is the uh, reason to give this lecture. Now ideas for doing better. It's not so obvious how you can improve the situation because it is very complex. If you can spend that much time on BPA and think that there are about, I will always say, 100,000 substances, uh, you can easily imagine how difficult things are. Just to go a bit backwards, what is um, in that regulation? Although the evaluation is more on the uh, implementation, the principles, than the regulative text. But anyway, uh, the present regulation, which is the 1935 from 2004. Um, 2004, okay, but most of the, the principles are much older than that. So first, of course, it's the definition of tasks, the protection of the consumers, of course. Um, the functioning of the European market, of course, that is not debated, really. Um, not from 90, uh, 1976 later on is that clear separation between risk assessment and risk management. That was introduced in the um, time after 2000. Um, this is an important thing because it means that the key sentence in protecting consumers do not endanger human health. Uh, this is not the matter of um, the legislator, the commission. This is the matter of IFSA. Um, IFSA has to specify what is uh, considered safe, um, what is the degree of safety, if you want, uh, and what is necessary to demonstrate safety. Um, then. Well, that is the old approach, which is now the main um, subject for discussion, is how is that um, implemented? How is the protection um, of the consumers implemented, first of all? The idea from the 70s was to separate the full contact materials, you know, it's a very broad field, into seven types. And for each of these seven types, to have a specific um, legislation, 
um, and evaluate the substances used, notably the substances used, not those migrating, which is uh, quite different, um, and to create positive lists for each of these materials. So positive list means that the substances used have to be from that list. You uh, cannot use another one, or if you want to use another one, you first have to go through the evaluation procedure. Then it was promised to make um, testing methods, which is mainly a matter of simulation, uh, to provide basic assumptions, for example, on exposure. And, uh, well, there's quite a, a bit of uh, such subjects around because of that very broad variability on the uses of food contact materials. So, in all, um, the idea was to have, I call that a collective compliance work with the strong involvement uh, of the public, of authorities. That was the idea from the 70s. And this is what needs to be discussed, what is really feasible. Also, the declaration of compliance, that is uh, more recent, that's from about uh, 2004. Well, how far did we get? First of all, um, only few types have been regulated, actually only plastics, uh, over 40 years. So it took more than 40 years, and even for the plastics, it's only monomers and additives that are regulated. Many more substances are used which do not fall under these two, and they are not uh, in the list. So um, an authorization of all the substances for all the 17 uh, is simply unrealistic. As already mentioned, the reaction products and impurities, what um, is uh, called emotionally as um, non-intentional, um, they were not addressed. Um, up to about 2000, there was a very strange non-scientific uh, assumption, and this is that the sorting substances sort of cover all the reaction products. Um, I was always amazed uh, about that uh, science. Um, if you do a chemical reaction, you get something new, and you cannot say it is covered. Um, this is not totally true, because um, at IFSA we look for, at least for 10 years, we look always at all the side products, not only the substance itself. However, um, all that effort um, is made hardly any use of. Well, the official control doesn't do the job it should. Um, firstly, because um, it's difficult to know what to check. As long as an official laboratory doesn't know what could migrate, um, what does the chemical analysis. And if we find something which is uh, unacceptable, uh, we don't have any adequate measures to react, because we would have probably to take nearly um, half or may even all of the food contact material from the market, which is obviously not possible. So today, there is a large gap between the legal requirements and the uh, reality, which of course is known to the Commission, and this is why uh, this step came, and this is why it is now the moment to introduce better ideas how it should be um, improved. This is a, uh, an open window for a year, perhaps, yeah, I think it's about a year, and afterwards, um, you know, once uh, the uh, framework regulation is agreed again, then it remains closed again for 15, 20 years. Um, <coughs> well, um, sorry, um, this way, I just want to show two examples to illustrate um, about uh, the complexity of what it is about. This is a um, chromatography from a polypropylene film, which was uh, um, not a commercial product. Um, it is a polypropylene set to, be, to consist of two substances, propylene and um, ergophos as a stabilizer. It was treated with pulsed light to decontaminate that film, um, but that is not really important. The extract was pre-separated by HPLC and then it is GCFID uh, to look at these fractions. So low polarity going to higher polarity. Um, well, two substances have been used, so the two substances used um, are regulated. 
which are they? Um, well, propylene is not visible here. It's a gas anyway, so probably not even present. And Irgafos is this peak here. So everything else is not regulated uh, because it's not intentionally added, or at least it's not an additive or a monomer. Um, if you look at the sensitivity required, um, it's of, of course um, just a rough estimate because um, I don't know what the plastic film will be used for, but um, an assumption um, is here. Um, if you don't know anything about the substance, it may be genotoxic, car carcinogenic, and then the TTC applies for potentially genotoxic carcinogens. And if I calculate roughly an exposure, then it is about this kind of a peak here, which is the detection limit required by the present rules. So every component forming a peak bigger than that, and even worse if it's several peaks which have to be added up, I don't want to go. So all of that has to be looked at and evaluated. Well, um, these are the um, simple normal um, oligomers, um, so saturated hydrocarbons, and then you see lots and lots of peaks. Um, the majority, sure, are quite um, uh, common components of no concern, fatty acids, for example, but there are also others which, if you just go through the tox tree or another simulation, then you see they may be quite toxic. Another example, um, this is really a bit tricky here, um, is recycled paperboard. It's also an extract. It's analyzed by GC times GC. So first dimension GC, that's second dimension. Um, up here are the N-alkanes, down here are the polar components. The attenuation of this plot is such that the small, it's just about visible components um, are at or above 10 ppb in food if migration is high. So it means that all these components have to be evaluated. And note, uh, this is 10 ppb. 10 ppb is roughly 10 times higher than the TTC value and is basically not accepted by present rules of the EFSA. Well, an impressive job to do. Um, we are very far away from having it done. Probably not even feasible. Now, I have some suggestions and, um, well, I'm just going through six points. The first is quite obvious. Um, the public has uh, not enough resources to do the jobs it promised to do. So nearly all has to be done by industry, uh, by self-control, which is a heavy um, task because mostly 95 or sometimes even uh, practically 100% of the migrating substances are not starting substances, are not listed, so they have to find ways to do the evaluation themselves. Very important message, I always hear that um, as, um, as I was working for the control authority, industry should no longer wait until the public tells them what to do and how to do it. Um, this is simply not feasible. They have to find their ways themselves. Of course, this has to do with collaboration because most of the work um, is, um, um, well, important for many producers. It's exactly the same uh, job they have to do. Very important, and this is uh, the basic uh, idea behind the Declaration of Compliance, is that um, the food contact materials, they should be built uh, from the beginning to the complete final product, um, always with safety in mind. So each of the many contributors, of the companies contributing to a final food contact material should be involved, um, simply because uh, they know what they do, what uh, the processes are, what the substances are and in this way share the work. And the main po point of all that is filtering out, I guess, the few substances which are really of potential concern. 
Uh, most substances are not. But how do you find about these many, many substances, those which really need to be um, cared about? Um, this is just a schematic to, to illustrate a bit this concept. Um, if you start from um, a polymer, a raw polymer, you go through the manufacturing of a film, then you combine several films to a multi-layer and then you print it. Um, maybe you treat it for decontamination. It's always the same. Um, new substances are introduced and the system is only promising to work if at each step as many of these substances, each arrow is a substance, is uh, evaluated and concluded about as possible. So only delegating work for a few substances to the next step. Do that step for step such that at the end um, the work is feasible, um, the work by the packer or whatever uh, it is. So at each step, the compliance work should be concluded as far as possible um, to make things feasible. Now, the effect on regulation, and uh, it's, it's about uh, revising the basic re regulation. Uh, the regulation should take um, into account that the main work is self-controlled by industry, and it should focus on the implementation um, and on supporting as much as possible um, the producers in doing this job. First of all, uh, it has to be clarified what are the requirements. This is not the Commission's job, this is EFSA's job. Then what is Commission's job is supporting industry as far as possible. I think one of the important things is listing approved substances and materials such that um, you don't evaluate the same again and again. Um, and I'm coming back to that, uh, providing the means which trigger the best possible the implementation by the market, because the market is the, stronger, the strongest trigger. Um, well, <clears throat> the second point is that instead of um, um, pre-use assessment, as it is done now. Now it is, as long as you have, uh, don't have the permission, you shouldn't use it, um, which is only possible for a very minor um, part of the substances uh, which migrate, those used. We should, uh, the legislation should focus on uh, the control by industry. Well, industry controls, um, then control authorities have to control that control, and so this role needs to be strengthened. Um, today, um, control authorities are quite unable to do that. We don't have the means for that. Um, you should also note that control authorities in most countries have very few people, so the resources are very small. So to make that halfway feasible, uh, the efficiency has to be greatly improved and that is by sharing the work uh, throughout Europe, not only throughout Switzerland, but throughout the whole of Europe. Very important is the harmonization in the processes used, such that the industry knows what goes on, and um, it's always requested in the same way. Very important is that the evaluation is always the same. So if one um, authority says this is okay, all others should uh, be able to accept that. And if it's not uh, okay, then the measures have to be um, harmonized. Okay, so that is my first point. Now, useful is listing. Listing substances which have been approved by somebody is a very important tool to facilitate work. Um, the idea to separate full contact materials into 17 types and make 17 lists, of which um, hardly any are made, um, was not successful. That is not the way to go. There should be a single list um, which should combine all um, adequately approved substances. And, uh, well, it should be the name of uh, the, the body who improved it, uh, who approved it, 
because it's not only EFSA, there are many approving substances. Um, yes. Also, uh, the reaction products, impurities, should be uh, in that list. Um, and, um, well, there are substances today which have been sort of authorized through EFSA opinions. Um, these are reaction products and uh, impurities which you can find if you look for in the opinions. But since they are not extracted into the list, um, hardly any use is made of that. Second point um, is um, the work has to be um, eased such that it is really implementable. If we ask things which are not feasible, that paralyzes the whole system. Um, there are problems um, which um, I know. We have seen things, um, food contact materials for which the safety assessment, I wouldn't know how to do it because you cannot analyze to a sufficient extent and um, mixture toxicity uh, testing is not sufficiently sensitive to get um, a result. So it has to be improved and the main thing is to go through um, better exposure assessment. Because today it's all going through the same assumption which may be insufficient for children. It is often if children always eat the same. Um, and in other cases it is far too severe. Uh, just for example a seal of oven doors which we actually had look for. And a subject which is always avoided, but of course um, is something to be taken um, into account. Um, the foods we eat contain toxic sub substances and how do we evaluate those against uh, the chemicals which are introduced uh, artificially. If you roast something, you produce wild chemistry and uh, nobody asks for or just says there's a long history of safe use, which basically does not more mean more than next morning you still feel okay. There's no long-term assessment. So regulation should be adjusted to that, and I might skip that a bit. Um, the main thing is to, um, to go th um, through a better um, exposure assessment because that may ease the requirements without losing uh, on safety. However, that means that an SML is um, linked to a material. It's no longer an SML allowing the use for everything as it is today. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is not a very easy way um, because you have to finally share um, the TDI among several uses, uh, you will get several uh, SMLs um, depending on the exposure um, of the substance. And uh, <laughs> another, substance, another problem is that if the same substance is later also used for against something else, then the exposure increases and that means that the SMLs, the existing SMLs, would have to be reduced. But something in that direction should go. The drivers for implementation, that's a very important thing, I believe. Um, the safety assessment is very costly and somehow you have to motivate. And the present drivers are, are weak ones or wrong ones, sorry. Mm. Um, enforcement authorities are quite unable to, to do that. NGOs and media, they are very often quite inadequate and they only look at things which are well known and not um, on things which are not evaluated at all. So the main drivers should be uh, the food industry. That's the packers, that's the brand owners and so on. And I'm sure they would uh, prefer approved materials if they would know that they are well approved. And the present system doesn't do that because the um, declaration of compliance doesn't really say what has been done. It's not known what is behind it. So 
what would be important is a listing of approved materials from which uh, the industry can take uh, their materials. That would trigger industry to produce um, approved materials. So approved materials, that is uh, the main thing here. Several um, reasons to do that. Um, here may be the thing which I want to um, stress. IFSA is unable to approve all these materials. Um, enforcement authorities are maybe doing better because there are more. But the main thing is probably to have private bodies evaluating against clear rules um, materials um, to be listed there. We need better enforcement. Enforcement has to organize itself better to have a more effect. That is mainly a thing of European collaboration, I just mentioned before. Um, the, si the point six, my last point, is um, we have to take into account that the majority of the food contact materials today, nearly all, do not comply with the rules which exist today, particularly not with the requirements uh, which are defined by EFSA. So what should authorities do? Should they all take from the market, which is completely impossible? So we have to think on how can this transition to an acceptable situation be done. Um, yeah, we have to also justify our um, position towards the consumer. If you go out to the street and say, well, all these food contact materials are unsafe, um, that's not feasible. So um, work plans are my suggestion. So, if you look at the food contact material, first uh, it has to be decided whether there is obvious um, risk. So can they stay on the market? If you say they can at least temporarily stay on the market, that's probably the most, then um, industry has to submit a work plan to show how the gaps are closed. This is also uh, um, a thing which is within um, all the other points I mentioned before, for example, uh, with rules which are more feasible. So this is just a list of what I suggest uh, to be done. Um, authorities um, have to admit that they cannot do uh, the job they promised. Listing should be improved because that is a very useful um, way to support the work of the producers. Uh, the EFSA guidance, the definition of what is safe and what is needed, has to be um, revised um, to make it uh, feasible. This is a tricky part. Uh, then we have to make um, the packers and food industry able to, do, um, to select the best materials with regard to safety, which uh, is, means for me listed uh, approved materials. Enforcement has to do a better job and we have to find a way uh, to manage uh, the situation of today, which is uh, the problem that most materials uh, do not um, comply with the requirements um, which are uh, today. My last point, just to make something a bit positive, is there is a lot of work to be done, but most of that work only has to be done once. Because if you have 100 substances, I would guess it's a few which are really a problem. And it's this filtering out which is the main uh, work to be done. Thank you.